All right, we are back here on Sportsline. Kermit Davis, Middle Tennessee, coming up in just a moment. The Blue Raiders with a big win over Western Kentucky on Sunday down there in the borough. That game it was back and forth. Middle shot lights out in the ball game, and Western was right there to the very end. Just a fun game, and, and good to see it back on the schedule, by the way, because with the conference realignment they didn't play last year and that's a big void in the winter schedule i think when you don't have middle tennessee and western kentucky hooking up on the hardwood and this is the only meeting this year so for a two-year span there's just one meeting at least scheduled in the regular season they could meet again in a conference tournament but that was a big win for Middle Tennessee as they try to right the ship. They've lost five of six. Then they get a win at Marshall last week and come home and get that big win. It is a n nice turnaround for Middle Tennessee over the last couple of weeks. We are joined now by the head coach of the Blue Raiders, good buddy, Kermit Davis. Coach, how are you tonight? Steve, I'm doing good. I got back from uh, Memphis just in time, doing a little recruiting. We don't play until Saturday, so... Uh... Just got home and watched the Wildcats beat my Bulldogs. Yeah, that's true. They, they've they been beating up on a lot of people so far this year. Uh, since you brought it up, Kentucky, I don't know how much you've gotten a chance to see them, but they're now 28-0. As you look out there and some historical perspective to it, just how good is this team John Calipari's put together? Well, it's, you know, when you got a team, kind of reminds me of the old UCLA team when they would have, you know, eight or nine pros on the team, and that's what they have. But the one thing that's different about this team is they've got, you know, the Harrison twins and Willie Collestein is a, a junior. So you got leadership on the team. And, and you know, you get eight or nine first-round picks. Uh, I mean, the, the talent level and the foul troubles and be able to sustain – different types of things that go on in a game is unbelievable. But it's one of the best college teams I've ever seen. They've got tons of bodies to throw out there on the court and big-time talent. You've got plenty of bodies yourself. You've got 10 guys averaging double-figure minutes, and I thought that depth was really big for you guys on Sunday against Western Kentucky. Well, it has been. You know, we've played kind of beat up right now. We've got a couple guys out with injuries, but we have been. We've played... I think we started 11 different guys in, in games. And and I think, Steve, hopefully that'll, that'll pay off in the conference tournament when you have to win three, maybe mm -hmm. four games, you know, in, in a short period of time. You guys also shot the ball extremely well on Sunday, yet they were right there. That was a heck of a rivalry game to watch. What was the feeling like in the locker room after you guys got that big one? Well, it was it was fun, Steve. You know, we only had two guys that have ever played in a Western Kentucky game. That's right. A roster over the last, you know, couple of years. You know, we've lost six seniors, six seniors. And so and I tried to really talk to him about the rivalry over the, over the last couple of days before we played. And I said, you'll sense it in the first couple of minutes. And they did. And they embraced the rivalry. I'm a guy that embraces rivalries. I know it just counts one loss, one win. But... I just think it's really, really important and something that affects your fan base on that magnitude. And, uh, and I think our guys embraced it. They knew they were right in the middle of one. Well, you know both of these fan bases certainly want each of those matchups whenever you guys get together. And the fact that because of all the realignment, you didn't play last year. This is the only scheduled meeting this year. Did that make this one even more special for you? I think it did, Steve. You know, I was hoping we could have played last year, but it didn't work out. Uh, you know, it was kind of an oversight on the Conference USA that it wasn't at home and home. I don't think they really understood our league that this is by far the best rivalry in mm -hmm. the league in all sports. And, uh, and so it's one of those things. I don't think it'll ever happen again, but we did. We kind of got lucky that the game was on our court this year, and uh, but it came at a really good time for us. What has gotten into Giddy Potts? He played well Sunday, but last week against Marshall, eight threes, monster night. What, what have you done? What have you fed him? Well, <laughs> we tried to unfeed him. <laughs> Came in at 242 pounds. Now he's, he's 215 pounds. And, you know, he's just an offensive talent. And he, he has shown spurts deep throughout the year. He can shoot. He's athletic. He can jump. He's just a freshman that 
he struggles at times trying to defend. But, but he's just, you know, he's just a friend. He's averaging a little under 11 points a game in late play. So I think for sure he'll make the conference USA all-freshman team. But he does. I tell you what, when he jumps up and shoots it, it looks as good as anybody in college basketball. And he's got on a roll. Our, our team did a great job finding him. And for a freshman, he just has a – he's got a confidence. He, you know, when he's one of those guys, Steve, he misses. It doesn't carry over the next play. And, uh, and that's what good offensive players do. Every good shooter has to have no conscience, right? <laughs> I'm sure just like you, Steve. I'm sure that's the way you are. <laughs> well, the problem was mine never went in with no conscience. <laughs> I kept shooting, but they never fell. We're joined by Middle Tennessee basketball coach Kermit Davis. Coach, you've had such good teams down there. This year it's been a little bit up and down with the young squad. You had lost five of six before last week. Do you feel like those two wins and the way you won them maybe helping turn the corner for this team a little bit? I, I sure hope so, Steve. You know, we're, we're all in the same boat throughout college athletics and, and excuse me, college basketball. And we went on the road to the Texas swing and we lose a double overtime uh, game at Rice. We're up 21 in the second half in North Texas. We get beat on last second free throws. So, you know, if you win those two, you've won five out of six, and people say, boy, you may be the hottest team in the league. So it's just – and your and your team is the same team. So it's just – you just got to have staying power. you got to be able to adjust from a, a Thursday loss to a Saturday game or a, two wins, two losses. And everybody in college basketball is going through it right now. But it definitely – this weekend helped us. I think a couple of the trademarks of your teams over the years have been really good depth, and it always seems like you have a guy in the front court, and it seems like it's almost a new guy every year the way it's gone the last few years that really steps up for you. And this year, that's been Reggie Upshaw, hasn't it? Leading scorer, leading rebounder on the team. How has he been able to elevate his game this year? Yeah, he's our best player. He he has really, really improved. And, you know, the one thing I look at Reggie, he's only a sophomore. And I looked at Sean Jones when he's a sophomore and some other really good players that we had. And we probably didn't ask those guys to try to, you know, have the role that Reggie does now. We're trying to ask him to be our, our best leader, uh, you know, a mature guy. And he's made so much progress. But i tell you one thing. He has a chance before he leaves here to be the MVP of our league. He's a great talent, really good teammate. And, uh, boy, he's given us some great minutes over the last uh, couple months. Kermit Davis, basketball coach of Middle Tennessee, joining us here on Sportsline. Coach, if you can, handicap the league a little bit for me right now as you view it here in the final couple weeks of the regular season. Last year, there were several teams, yourself included, right there at the top, fighting for the conference championship and a bid into the NCAA tournaments. This year, got Louisiana Tech. UTEP, UAB, they're all kind of right there in the mix, but it seems like there's a whole lot more depth in the middle of the league right behind that first pack. You know, Steve, I, I, I kind of I think to explain the league and how good it is, uh, I think Conference USA is still trying to, to get over the misidentity of Memphis not being in the league nationally. Old Dominion was ranked uh, 24th, 25th. And now they're in fifth place in our league. So that shows you how good the league is. And Old Dominion is very, very good. Uh, but I think that Louisiana Tech and UTEP right now are both could be NCAA tournament teams. You look at a team like Charlotte, they beat South Carolina. They've had some really good non-conference wins. They get lost nine times in the league. I think Old Dominion is a very good team. UAB is so young. They played maybe the most difficult schedule in college basketball early with a lot of new guys. And so they got beat down. And they came into our, our game, the very first league game, won a close game. It's almost like their team got a lot of confidence. And so, like a lot of teams, but they're undefeated at home. They've had a little struggles on the road. But uh, I tell you what, I, I love the tournament being Birmingham, Steve. I think it's going to be a fantastic week of basketball down there. You've got the Blazers in Birmingham on Saturday looking for a little payback. As you mentioned, they beat you to start off the conference year. Full week of preparation. Do you like that? And, and what can you do differently this time? It's a, it's, a, it's a great point. I think it came at a really good time for us. You know, we, our young team has been grinding. What we did is that we took off Monday because of a Sunday game. And then on a Tuesday, we practice in the morning. We've kind of done a lot of non-contact stuff 
Today we had a physical practice, but it was good. We had good. We, we probably lifted more weights this week than we have uh, in the past three or four weeks, and uh, it, come, it came at a really, really good time for us. Final couple weeks of the regular season here, and then that conference tournament down in Birmingham this year. Just how important is seeding for that tournament in this particular year in your mind? Well, I tell you this, Steve. You know, if you don't get one of the first four. Uh, round buys in the quarterfinals. I don't think it matters if you're fifth or twelfth because I think it's all about matchups. I really do. I mean, yeah, I think that Texas trip kind of, you know, it was tough. We could have had one of those wins. They were one game out of a first round buy, so we got to win all three of our games, have some good things go our way to get one of those. And I'm telling you, Steve, you look at you look at kind of okay, we're we're sixth, who we play and. You almost may want to be ninth or tenth, so I think it's just kind of luck of the draw. Uh, you've got it going down there at middle, always looking to win, getting up to the top of the conference standings. I've got to ask you, because it's been a hot topic on this show this week, from the high school ranks, have you ever seen two teams try to throw a game before? No, I haven't. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for, you know, just, just, girls basketball in our area and what Riverdale has done and it's funny I was uh, I was I went to the boys game right after that game there's a kid that were recruiting and my assistant coach I called him and we just got this to practice on a Saturday and I said I said when I said you know how much time is left I'm on my way coming out of the office he goes coach I'm watching something I've never seen in my life and he, he kind of was explaining it I got there right at the end of that girls game I didn't see it but you can just feel a buzz around that gym and just one of those things I think both of those coaches are really really good men I think they made bad decisions at that particular time and they, they wish they had the game back but it's a uh, and you know this, this media they just won't let it die Steve I'm pulling out of my uh, Nashville early Tuesday morning and Boomer Esiason on some radio station is talking about the Riverdale Smyrna game. Right. So, so you just forget like how powerful the media is on a Saturday afternoon consolation game and it takes a life of its own. Yeah, it certainly is. And frankly, it's the power of sports that, you know, big wins carry a lot of weight. But when you have stories like this, unfortunately, it carries a lot of weight in the wrong direction as well. Kermit Davis, we always appreciate your time, your insights. Congratulations on the big wins last week and good luck this weekend down there in Birmingham. Well, thanks a bunch, Steve. I really enjoyed being with you. Absolutely. Kermit Davis, the fine coach down at Middle Tennessee. The Blue Raiders playing pretty good basketball after wins over Marshall and rival Western Kentucky last weekend. Now they get set for UAB. That is an afternoon game on Saturday. And then just two more games next week before you get set for the Conference USA tournament. And, and that is maybe the great thing when you're in a position like a middle Tennessee that if you can play well down the stretch even if you don't get one of those buys you go into that tournament feeling like you're you're pretty good and you're playing pretty well and then you get a win you get a second win now all of a sudden you you really feel like you got something going on and the pressure in Birmingham in that tournament it's not going to be on middle Tennessee it's going to be on the Louisiana Techs and the UTEPs of the world to get that automatic bid. Kind of a polar opposite situation of what happened so often to Middle Tennessee during the Sun Belt days when they were dominant regular season teams and had some trouble with all that pressure in the postseason at times. This should be a tournament where they go in with very little pressure and a chance to maybe pull a shocker if they can get hot. So good luck to them in the coming weeks. We will take a break. When we come back, we will switch gears a little bit, talk a little hockey, also get into some NFL combine talk as well. So stay tuned. You're watching Sportsline right here on News Channel 5+. Plus. <laughs> 